In this video, I want to talk about gratitude and why it's now an essential thing to practice, to manage stress, to function better, and sometimes even just to keep your sanity. Hi, I'm Stephen Burns from MindSchool and today we're going to be discussing gratitude, the practice of giving yourself full credit of everything that is good about you, about your life, and everything that is just in general working for you. I want to outline three reasons why you absolutely must be practicing gratitude on a regular basis. So gratitude is one of these interesting things where it does kind of sometimes put people off because they think it's going to be super cheesy, a little bit kind of esoteric, sort of kind of new agey and hippie, California esque like we're all gonna kind of sit by a campfire and you know hug each other and sing kumbaya or something like that but I really want to sell you the idea that practicing gratitude regularly is not just a kind of nice thing to do or something that you do if you're a bit of a new age hippie but it is actually an essential practice to get the most that you possibly can out of life so let's kick off and take a look at reason number one so the first reason why you should be practicing gratitude regularly is because it helps reverse something called the negative bias. So the negative bias is the idea that the brain tends to log negative experiences and events in our life more brightly, more strongly than positive ones. So we need to work a little bit harder to reinforce the positive ones or we may end up kind of glossing over them or potentially even forgetting about them completely. And this is a little bit annoying when you think about it. To give you a quick example of this, say if you were to think about something from maybe 10 years ago that was a bad experience experience, maybe it still affects you today, nothing nothing traumatic of course, then there's a very good chance that you can still remember that memory pretty vividly. Unless you've gone through extensive therapy and you've fully let it go and moved on, then there's possibly even a chance that you've got a photographic memory of that past bad event. Whereas if you were to think about something positive and nice and fluffy from around about 10 or 15 years ago, sure, you're probably still going to remember it, but it's not going to be quite as bright, quite as vivid, quite as strong inside your mind as the negative one. This is the negative bias in action. And when you think about it, it does make sense from an evolutionary perspective because it's done to protect us. The brain's prime directive is to keep you safe and it often doesn't take any chances. So if we have a bad experience that is, you know, it has a lot of negative emotion attached to it, in order to protect us, the brain highlights that inside our mind so that we can potentially avoid that situation in the future. So this is one of the primary reasons why you want to be practicing gratitude because negative experiences take up more space than positive ones they are highlighted a little bit brighter. So in order to reverse that, we have to practice gratitude and connect with all of the good things in our life, and that brings them more to the forefront of our experience. As a bit of an aside, the, the negative bias is why older people tend to get cynical and sceptical when they eventually reach a certain age. It's because they've built up a kind of stockpile of negative experiences that have been highlighted more brightly than positive ones, and they've eventually just reached a tipping point, a threshold moment, and it's kind of shoved out most of the positive ones and end up just becoming a right old cynic and they're very, very sceptical about life in general. But we can reverse this and the way to reverse it is by practicing gratitude regularly. So that's reason number one. Reason number two is it just makes life more enjoyable. It just helps us live life from a much more positive base. Because so often what people do is they'll go after you know important goals in their life, but then as soon as they accomplish a goal, they'll then just move on to the next next one and they'll not really take too much time to, to celebrate, to connect with the joy and the, the satisfaction, the glory of accomplishing that goal. You see this a lot, especially in like to the corporate world and the workplace. If you're kind of like embedded into the corporate rat race, then I'm sure you'll know that it's all about, you know, achieving targets. But usually you achieve one target and then there's another target, then another one, then another one after that. And it just keeps on going on and on and on and on and on. And you don't really take much time to, to celebrate. Uh, the accomplishment of each of those individual targets. And when we do this, life just becomes a bit of a grind. You know, it can become just a little bit hard work and also a little bit pointless too, because at the end of the day, why do we set goals? Why do we set targets? Well, it's done so that we can head in a more powerful, a more positive direction and just get more of the things in life that bring us happiness, that bring us joy, that bring us fulfillment. However, if we are not taking the time to really celebrate and really connect with the joy and satisfaction and fulfillment, 
then what's the point? So again, in order to reverse this, you want to practice gratitude. You want to really connect with all of these amazing things that you've accomplished, all of the great positive you know, aspects of your life that are currently going on. I'll give you a little bit of a, a metaphor just to go along with this second reason. I remember a few years ago, I was uh, had to go and get fitted for glasses. And, and I was putting this off and putting this off and putting this off until eventually I was becoming a bit of a danger, especially on the road. And I still remember to this day when I got the glasses and I was driving home with them on for the very first time. And I couldn't believe the difference. It was pretty scary actually thinking about it in retrospect. But all I wanted to do was basically stop and just stare at trees because trees are really cool, especially if you've not really seen them properly for a number of years. And I couldn't believe just how rich and how detailed the trees were. And it was quite hypnotic. There was something really, really mindful and nice about it. And I remember thinking to myself, all of that beauty was already there, but I just missed it because I couldn't really see it because I wasn't wearing my glasses. And for me, this is a nice little analogy or a metaphor for what we often do when we gloss over our goals or gloss over experience. We don't take the time to really see the beauty, to really connect with the pleasure and joy that's already in front of us. But when we practice gratitude, I'm sure you've guessed it, it reverses this and it helps us connect with that joy. So that's reason number two. Reason number three is it helps you raise your self-esteem and your self-worth. I think it's a big problem that so many people downplay their talents. They're very modest about their accomplishments and you know all of the, the amazing things about their, their personality, about who they actually are. And this of course can vary from person to person. Some people are pretty good. They're, they're pretty good at boasting and advertising their talents. But I think the vast majority of people they really struggle with that. They don't want to stick their head above the parapet. They don't want to boast. They don't want to impose and they don't want to be visible. So it prevents them from really connecting with all of the great things about them. And I think this can vary from culture to culture too. One of the things you know I love about, for example, the American culture is they just seem to be so much more comfortable advertising their talents, you know, stepping out there and letting people see what they're all about. Whereas if I compare that to my own culture, a Scottish culture where I live, then we tend to be kind of the opposite end of the scale. You know, we're not allowed to boast, that's really frowned upon, you know, you, you shouldn't be kind of like sticking your head above the parapet, you shouldn't be over-exaggerating your talents. And I think what a lot of people do in Scotland is they internalise this and they end up almost like, you know, devaluing their own talents, their own worth. And it's kind of like we treat ourselves as second-class citizens and don't really want to acknowledge and internalise our achievements. Now, I'm not suggesting that you head out straight away after watching this video and start boasting to everyone exactly how amazing you are, that is not the most attractive trait. But I think you do want to feel it on the inside. I think as you internalise this and really feel it on the inside, then it raises your self-esteem, it raises your self-worth, and you live life from just a much more positive and a much more resourceful base. So that's three reasons why you absolutely should be practising gratitude regularly. It helps reverse the negative bias, it makes life more enjoyable and more easy, and it also raises your self-esteem and your self-worth. So what do you think? Do you agree with me? Disagree with me? Is there any I've missed out that you'd like to add? Let me know in the comments below. And of course, if this is the first time you've stopped by, then if you could consider subscribing and dropping a like, that would be absolutely fantastic. It helps with the YouTube algorithm thingy. And also, I'd be very grateful. I'd write it down in my gratitude list that you took the time to subscribe and hit that like button. So hopefully you enjoyed this video. Um, have a great rest of the week and I'll see you later on.